There's a traditional way of coming up in comedy. Like, people go work as a stand-up. Right. Or, or they go to Saturday Night Live and they get an audition or something. Like, you came up in comedy with cartooning, right? Yeah, I mean, what I wanted to do was go into sketch comedy. I mean, but then, you know, how do you do that? Yeah, you, how do you turn that into a living? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and you'd watch TV, and I, I would always, there'd be, you know, on Johnny Carson or something, there'd be somebody from Second City TV, and they'd say, how'd you start? And I'd be waiting for the moment, well, okay, how do I do this? And it'd just be, well, so-and-so at Universal called because they were interested. And <laughs> it's yeah, like, right. well, you're like, whoa. How whoa. do I, no one from Universal's calling me? How do you know? Well, your story's <clears> great <throat> for some kid who's listening to this show who wants to get into comedy. You had a shitty little camera. What was the camera you had? The Bolex 16 millimeter for and 200 bucks. You went out and for. bought it and you said, I'm going to make a film. Yeah. It was called Office Space, which later I did the movie. That was the first one I finished. And it was like, yeah, two minutes long. And it was the character Milton and the stapler and the boss coming in. And, and, and when you made the film, you even said you had to like just kind of try to like sync your voices because like a 60 millimeter film, you had to go in somewhere and record the voices, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I had one of those cassette recorders. Uh, yeah, with that would run the A and B side together, so you'd get four tracks. So you make this little film, and and what do you do? Do you send it to someone? I literally called information, called four one one, and I felt really stupid. But I, I'd called, you know, New York information. There was no internet back then. I'd just uh, say, uh, yeah, MTV, please, and at Comedy Central. I just, and I, I would get the runaround, and then I would just get a name and an address and send, I sent out VHS tapes. Literally like a cold call. Like oh, totally, yeah. You totally didn't know cold. these people. Knew you, nobody. You didn't even know anybody's name. You just, you, uh, who's the guy who's in charge at MTV? Yeah, well, yeah. I, w I would say like, they had that show Liquid Television, so I'd call, and of course everyone's just, these people who answer the phone are just love being an asshole to you. Yeah, like right. you're just some yeah. weirdo calling. And Who noticed it? Uh, the show Kids in the Hall called actually. Wow. Because when I'd sent them that i'd mm -hmm. done the fourth short i'd made which was the beavis and butthead short it's kind of weird too with beavis and butthead because i remember the first time i saw it i was like whoa this is really peculiar <laughs> already it was going on mtv and i couldn't fucking wrap my head around it yeah, i kind of wanted it to be i wanted it to look like maybe it was made by a deranged person <laughs> yeah <laughs> like maybe people would wonder but it's so What's brilliant on, because yeah. it was so simple, you know? And you've said even, like, Charlie Brown inspired you because it was such simple drawings. Yeah, I love the way, like, it just simple animation, like the way Pigpen had all those just lines of dirt animating yeah, around it was like, him. It was, it was just, just like, like little pen lines. It, yeah. was like, it was nothing. Yeah. You draw, right? Yeah, that that I'm not really naturally good at. I have to force myself. You drew the Beavis and Butthead cartoons, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Animated every, uh, of the shorts, yeah. Animated the whole thing. When I got it looking the way I wanted it to, yeah, it was model sheets that I drew all the... Did you ever everything. consider in the beginning, like, having somebody else draw it? Because, like, as you say... Oh, you, yeah. Well, I mean, well, when it became a show, there were other people drawing it. And I realized pretty quickly, though, that... Um, when someone would just do this, they, they kind of would morph it into just very Saturday morning looking stuff and it wasn't funny anymore and it right. just, it needed that. It needed to look shitty. Yeah, it needed to look shitty in a s very specific way and I was always open to, you know, whatever works, whatever makes it funny. Did you draw King of the Hill? I drew the original, uh, yeah, model sheets, the very first drawings of them from most of the angles. It's amazing that you had the confidence to draw also because you're not trained as an artist. No, I'm, I'm horrible. I know, you know, having come from having been in, in the music world and, and kind of seen like, okay, there's people who are technically amazing, like, I don't know, John McLaughlin, but I, I would actually personally rather listen to Kurt Cobain play guitar, or somebody right. who's really just kind of, it's almost more interesting sometimes to see somebody who's trying to play something and was than Kurt, it is Kurt to see Cobain something. was not a great technical guitarist. Right, right? I mean, I, I just use that as one example, right. but yeah. like, I, and so I, I thought maybe there's something kind of interesting about seeing drawings animated that look like they were done by a 15 year old in his notebook. Do you still have those notebooks? Sketchbooks, that, yeah. yeah. And in the sketchbooks, what would you do? You would draw little pictures and then write notes next to them? Yeah, just mostly faces. I'm not, you know, I'm not good. I can't draw like buildings and trees and mountains, but it's mostly just faces. So how'd you do that people. with Beavis and Butthead when you needed a background, when you needed a tree or you needed I a... I just forced myself to learn. When, right. I was, when I was animating the shorts, actually I remember the second one I did, I had cars and monster trucks in it and I just could not draw a car and I was finally I was just like all right fuck it and I got out the Sunday paper where they have the ads for cars right and they have those like illustrations I just traced one <laughs> <laughs> and I started money? just tracing stuff I, I, right. you know you get out the little triangle and you draw like you know you can I kind of figured out point perspective and that's pretty something. quickly but and then again you did the drawing you did you, you, you wrote the scripts and then you went ahead and voiced the fucking things yourselves and did incredible voices with Beavis and Butthead and the voice thing is kind of to me was what I was 
that's the one thing that I've had the natural thing to. I, I was I always did imitations and stuff. I had pretty I, I could. Were those original two voices uh, uh, based on anyone? At that point, that was the fourth shirt I'd done. That was the first time where I had the drawing before I had the voice. Uh-huh. Right. And but Beavis is sort of uh, there was a guy who sat in the front of the class in, in algebra who was actually like a I mean in calculus and he was like a really smart guy. He wasn't like Beavis. He was. We had a teacher who was. Um, a former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, which it was unheard of for there ever to be a hot teacher. Right, ever. <laughs> it was just like it shot through the school, like oh my god! Like she she came in like midway through the year, and this guy would just sit in in the front row, just like biting his lip. He was so excited, <laughs> and he would laugh at everything she said. He just would go, like <laughs> <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> We'd sit in the back imitating him, and, he, and he'd be writing really fast. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah. and, uh, and that stayed with you. Yeah, and, and just that kind of like that energy of just, uh, but but I just kind of had drawn Beavis with a lighter, and I just imagined him kind of, based on sort of other people, but I, I took that laugh and that energy from That's that. That's great.